Come and leave it there I was down With no way up And I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well And I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free in the Word of God uh, as we prepare for Advent season. Uh, many of us know that Christmas uh, has lost, you know, I don't want to say it lost anything for us because we know the real meaning of Christmas, but the Christmas spirit in light of this pandemic, in light of where our world is, is anybody else feeling that, that it's just not the same? And I think that we have to focus all our attention on the real meaning of Christmas. We have to focus ourselves on what Christmas really means and the power of it. So, being that this is the second week of Advent, where we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm going to be doing a series of messages for the next three weeks that are going to pull out the principles, mainly the principles that are being taught through all of these powerful stories about the birth of Christ, all of the connecting stories that we have heard year and year, but God's word is so fresh and so timely. So today, I want you to go with me, um, if you will, get your Bibles or, or your devices and journey over to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, and I'm going to be uh, reading from the American Standard version of the text. So... We go with me to Matthew chapter 1 as we begin our journey into looking at what God would say to us through the birth of his son. I'm going to reading at verse 17 so we can get the full breadth of, of this chapter. You know, this chapter has genealogies and many times we don't understand how the genealogies impact and what the impact and effect of genealogies are. Uh, but right now, we're going to pick that up and go into the portion of Scripture and the person we're going to deal with today for God to teach us. Are you with me? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1. I'm reading American Standard Version, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham unto David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away of Babylon, 14 generations. From the carrying away to Babylon unto Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of, a, of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But when he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in his dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, but that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt, you shall, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all of this came to pass, very important, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall be for, bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. And Joseph arose from sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, until she brought forth a son. And he called his name Jesus. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I petition, Lord, I, I ask, Lord, I, be, I beseech you now, God, to send your presence 
into every house, every person watching, everyone that's tuned in. Let them know there is a word that you want to place in their spirit today that will not only bring them in a closer relationship, but will let them know that you are still a God who's in control and you have everything already worked out. Lord, take this feeble mind of mine, these, my mouth, my lips, my, my, my tongue, the, Lord, everything, my mom. Just let me be humble and let me prostrate myself under what I've studied so that the Holy Spirit can take control. I thank you now for what you're going to do, God. Have your way in Jesus' name. We're going to speak for as long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow from this thought. God's miracles for your life are in your purpose. Understand that again as I tell you. God's miracles... For your life are in your purpose. Every believer, as soon as we become a part of the kingdom of God and we become a new creation, I need you to know this morning, whatever your state, you were created to win. You were created to overcome the struggles, the vicissitudes, the ups and downs of life are nothing compared to the weapons, the gifts, and the, uh, what God has given us as believers so that we can handle the struggles that we go through. So whatever you're going through, I'm saying quite frankly, it's nothing compared to the gifts God has placed in the believer. We'll start with the fact that as soon as we get connected with the Holy Spirit, you do know the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. And as soon as you get connected with the Holy Spirit, watch what happens. Then God said there is a harvest in our lives in this sinful flesh. A harvest comes out that makes our flesh come under subjection to the Spirit of God that lives on the inside. And that's Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. You know the text that God has given us the fruit or the harvest or what our flesh is capable of once we are born again. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Listen to those seven fruits of the Spirit. But the last part of 23, verse 23 says, and no, we're subject to no law. The law has no effect on us. No law can come against what God has placed. What law is he talking about? The law of sin and death. Did you know once you got saved, you no longer have to be worried about whether or not you can overcome sin, and you no longer have to worry about whether or not you're subject to death. Jesus defeated death, and now because of his Spirit on the inside of us, I know i got a witness out there, somebody realizes I'm able to do some things now in my flesh that I never could do before I had God. So first of all, God said, one of the weapons I give you is that you have command. You can overcome your flesh. That's the news for somebody out there. Only problem is you're just not doing it. Secondly, God tells us not only can we overcome our flesh, but Luke 10, 19, he gives us a verse that said, behold, I've given you power to tread on all the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing he does shall hurt you. Did you hear that? God said that not only are you subject, your flesh subject to you, not only can sin not hurt you, God said now, because you belong to me, I'm talking about being an overcomer, God said now, you also have control of every demonic spirit. Will you quit being afraid of demonic spirits when you know the spirit that lives in you is stronger? I'm helping somebody. Don't let the spirits run your life. Don't let the spirit of anxiousness and anxiety and fear come in and tell you, that you have to be like that. No. God said you are an overcomer. You are a winner. So God said not only have you overcome your flesh, not only have you overcome the demons. He said just in case there's some, because you're out there doing my will and helping me build my kingdom. Just in case there's something else out there that tries to come against you. Watch this, y'all. God covers us with everything. I love this. He says in Isaiah 54, 17, he said that uh, no weapon, none, God said, formed against you shall prosper because this is the, and every tongue that rises against you, you shall cast down in judgment for this is the inheritance of my servants. Thus said, did you hear the word? He said, this is your inheritance as a child of God. And so can you at least celebrate with me this morning? One of those three areas fit what you're going through.
do. And we're going to take this, and that's why Joseph is so important. I'm going to show you how this is applicable to Joseph, because we now, watch this, we have power over our flesh, we have power over the devil, we have power over any other weapon that comes, and we should be victorious. But we got a problem. Hold up. Somebody watching me right now. You've been in a battle that you've been losing. Somebody sitting there asking me now, Pastor, I, I don't feel all this power. Where is it? I'm going to help you out. The problem is sometimes, I don't know why, most of the time, the things that we are supposed to overcome usually overcome us. Why? Why do we sit there and let, which God said we are overcomers, we are winners, why do we let it overcome us? I'm going to tell you why. I'm not going to leave you in suspense. Please listen to suspense. Listen to this. There comes a time in every person's life, especially a believer, where you're going to have a moment, this faith moment, this challenge that comes in your life, and the only way you're going to be able to move your life forward is by faith. You're going to find something that happens in your life where you're going to have to trust God. And here's the bad thing. Everybody's going to have it. Let me say it again. All of us are going to come face to face with a faith, with a moment in our life where we got to step out on faith. And if we don't move on the time we move, then we miss God's purpose in our life because that faith challenge and that faith moment God has. Watch me, y'all. They're built upon building one moment or another moment. My life will not go forward except by the power of God. That means something. Here's what it means. It means that you're stuck, not because you're not, you don't have the weapons. It means that you're stuck, not because God's not able. It means you're stuck because you have not stepped forward and faced that challenge to understand that God's purpose is revealed every time we take a step of faith. I'll say it again. God's purpose is revealed. Every time we take a step of faith, and when we take that step of faith, we walk into God's purpose, and automatically miracles come in our life. You don't believe me? As soon as you said, I'm not trying to get spooky, but as soon as you said, I'm saved, what did you do to get saved? All you said was, uh, forget the words, forget that, you know, the formula part of it, your heart changed. And in your heart chain, you said, I confess in my life, I believe in my heart that God is raised, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and God is raised from the dead. Watch this. As soon as you said it, your heart changed, you became a new creation. And when you became a new creation, something happened because your life got lined up with God's purpose. But the only way you can move from the step you're at now to the step where you need to be is by faith. So here is our problem. A long way back on your journey, somewhere you decided not to live or not to accept that big challenge to do it your way. Because that moment that I'm talking about, that moment that comes is God's will versus your will. God's desires versus your desires. Whichever one you choose tells what direction your life is going in. It comes in uh, common sense limits uh, versus the impossibilities or the possibilities of God's word and faith. You got to make up your mind. Will I choose the possibilities or will I keep using common sense and use the limitations to guide my life? No wonder you can't use the weapons to overcome. No wonder the enemy is attacking your family, attacking your children, attacking your mind, attacking your life. No wonder you can't stand up strong. No wonder it seems like five, six, seven years and your life has not changed or gone any further. The problem is, my brothers and sisters, don't let anybody fool you. This is a faith walk that takes us into the purpose. And when we get into the purpose, miracles continue to happen in our life. And don't let anybody fool you. All of us are going to need a miracle sooner or later in our life. All a miracle is to God is when you're building my kingdom in order to fulfill what I need you to do, you have to do a miracle. But the power is in the purpose. Everything you're looking for from God right now is when you yield yourself to God's purpose. It's only through purpose. Because when you, re when you meet that faith moment and you're not prayed up, 
You're not walked up, haven't been walking in spirit. You're not uh, uh, joyful enough where you let God's spirit take control. You're going to find out that you weren't able to handle it. Somebody better hear me because purpose is the only way you're going to see the miracles God already assigned. That prayer you're asking God already assigned a long time ago to answer. He said the answer, he knew what you were going to need, he knew what you were going to ask for. Do you hear me? And because he said an answer. And all you have to do is make sure you say, I will step out on faith because I realize I got to line myself up with the purpose of God. Here's what Proverbs 19.21 says when it talks about why purpose is so important. Proverbs 19.21. Many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is God's purposes that will last. Did I say that long? Did you hear the proverb? Did you hear what the proverb writer was saying. He said, you can make all kinds of plans. Your plans can fall through. But God's purpose is, watch this, they last. Why do they last? Because God has enough power to make his purposes last, even if he has to change circumstances, even if he has to break the laws of nature, whatever he has to do to make sure you get blessed. Don't tell me you don't understand that. So you went to the hospital, came out, don't know how you came out. Doctor don't know how you came out. God broke the law medicine. He gave you a miracle in your life because God said, you, you're lining up with my plans. You're stepping out on faith. So whatever happens, if you're in my purpose, you're going to be maintained. God's purpose also takes you. You can never find, your, find the will of God until you understand that it is God's purposes that lead your life if you reverence yourself. What am I talking about? Philippians 2.13 for it is God. Stop. Punctually. Hear me. It is God, not you, who worketh in you to both will and do of his good pleasure. Did you hear that? So when you don't allow God and don't reverence God's purpose and don't want to align it with God's purpose, then God said, I can't lead your life because you're leading it. God said, but it's me. If you want to be in my will, you'll get my purpose and you will get the miracles, and you will get the power, and you will get the strength you need to live. And finally, of course, we all know this verse, Jeremiah 29 and 11, that said, I know the plans I have for you. NIV says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to, not to harm you, plans to give you prosperity or hope and a future. God said, when you line up with me, somebody better come take this ride with me right now. I'm getting ready to show you how Joseph epitomizes, how Joseph shows us that if you want to prosper, you got to be able to come to that big faith moment and know that that faith moment or that challenge, okay, somebody just got right there and understand that faith moment and that challenge is going to lead me into God's purpose. And when I lead into God's purpose, I now have access to all the miracle working power I will ever need in my life because I'm doing it to build God's purpose. King. What am I talking about? You and I know I'm not the only one. When Joseph found himself faced with a task that the wife he had was found with child and he had not slept with her and she was pregnant and God asked him to marry her anyhow. I'm going to explain to you. We look over that like that's a good, that's not, a, that's not an easy thing, but I'm going to show you how Joseph knew how Joseph was ready. I'm going to show you in this text how Joseph prepared himself. I just told you what God has given us. I just told you what we need to do with it. Now Joseph is going to show you how to use it. Go with me. I'm going to give you three points. I said I'm going to go back to preach, but I'm going to give you one point at a time. So you need to understand. The first thing I want you to write down is Joseph wanted to live righteous. The gospel. We're in the book of Matthew. Consider the first gospel. Each one of the four gospel writers wrote about the life, death, and burial of Jesus Christ. And three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all wrote about some of the same events and same story, although the details were altered and changed. And the reason the details sometimes are not the same, uh, I'm just going to give you some what we call red line criticism, why there's a critical study of the text. You'll find out that the details is because each one of the gospel writers was trying to prove a theological point to a specific audience of people. 
Matthew, for instance, was writing to the Jews, and he's proving in his text that Jesus is king. Not only is he just the Messiah, because all of the gospel wanted to prove that Jesus was the Messiah, the right one, but Matthew wanted to prove his gospel is steeped in Judaism. His gospel shows all of the teaching of teachings of Jesus. His gospel has the Beatitudes and five other long discourses of what Jesus taught about the kingdom of God. And the reason Matthew did that is because he wanted you to know that Jesus was king. Luke wrote about something else. Mark about something else. But those three are called the synoptic gospel, synopticos, which means that they all saw things the same way. John's gospel was totally different. John wrote something else. So what I need you to understand is that each one of these Gospels, only two have a genealogy. Luke and Matthew, where we are today. I'm looking at Matthew's genealogy. The difference in the genealogy is that Luke's genealogy is based on Mary's genealogy. Our genealogy that we're looking at is based on Joseph. You say, why Joseph? Because Joseph was a part of God's purpose, and God placed him in a position that he was going to be the father of Messiah. This is what I just said. God placed him in a position that he was going to be the father of Messiah. But he didn't have to be if he didn't move by faith. Do you know you don't have to get what God has for you if you don't move by faith? Do you know you can ride around all day long, you can sit and cry in your house, you can look at preaching and turn it off, you can go in church, out of church, I don't care what you do. If you don't walk and accept that critical moment of faith, you're not going to find yourself able to get all the things God has for you. God said the miracles are lining yourself up with purpose. What we find out here is that I am so glad it's important that these gospel writers wrote what they wrote because I'm so glad and understand something that it shows that there was an historical and eyewitness account of Jesus. And this Jesus did live and all the miracles that folk wrote about did happen. And he did die on the cross in Calvary. That he rose again, went down to hell, uh, took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. Rose again with all power in his hand. Gave that power back to us. And now since he's in us, I know now why we can have miracles. Because Jesus is the Redeemer. And look, no other religion, I don't care who they are. And I'm not going to talk about a religion or whatever you talk about. No! that Jesus Christ himself, who is the third person of the Godhead, who was able to humble himself and become our Savior, nobody else says he got up with all power in his hand because he had the ability and the power to do it. So all I'm telling you is, I'm happy. It's something to shout about. Whatever's going on in my life, I'm going to give you a first point. My first point is you need to learn that living righteous is where the blessing comes because that gives you access to what Jesus has. Come on, turn your life around. Give what you all to shout about. I am saved. I got proof. I am saved because I believe that all of this has been looked at, criticized. People have studied over and over, and they've never been able to deny the existence of this Savior, and they've never been able to deny the miracles. You know how? Because they look at me and you, and we become a miracle. You know, when I was growing up in church, if you know something about the Baptist church, there was a song they used to sing. It does not have a theological, uh, uh, it's not theologically correct, I say, but it sure will move the spirit. Come on, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you've been in this thing long enough, there was a song that said something got a hold of me. I went to the meeting last night, and my heart wasn't right, but something got a hold. So if I never read another gospel, is there anybody out there with me? If I never read anything else, how many know that I know my God is real? What you need to do is wake up this morning. What you need to do is wake up and remember, no matter how many demons are on you, no matter how much struggle you're going through, no matter where you are now, it does not have to stay that way. Because your God is real. Joseph wanted to be right. Look what the text says. And uh, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. The gospel writer just told us how it came about. But then our text says, his mother Mary, verse 19, watch it, was pledged to marry Joseph. But before they came together, she was found with child. And Joseph said, uh, I'm not going to embarrass her. I'm going to put her away privately. Here's what you need to understand. Joseph was married to Mary, but before they could have relations, he found that she was with child. I used to read that and say, what does found with child mean. I'll tell you what it means in my neighborhood. If I had a fiance who had gotten pregnant 
and I didn't know who it was, I know what found which child means. It means I'm going out speedily and find who it is that impregnated her and give them a good talking to. Yeah, right. All I'm telling you is, think about the significance of this, and especially in a Jewish culture. It was something that was against the law. They both could have been excommunicated. Here is what happened. It says, Joseph found Mary without child. But then the next words tell us why. It says, and Joseph being a just man. There it is. That word just in your Bible really means, and Joseph living righteous. Joseph trying to live right. Don't act like this is not a big point. Just because you're saved don't mean you're living righteous. Matter of fact, this point is said Joseph wanted to live righteous because just because you're saved don't mean you want to live righteous. A lot of us want to live getting stuff from God. A lot of us want to live in a position where God can shower stuff on us. But we don't want to give back to God the things that his word demands. So we don't live right. Jeff Joseph wanted to live righteous. So somewhere along the line, that same verse I just gave you, something got a hold of me, somewhere Joseph found himself in a position where he said, I'm going to live for God. Meaning Joseph had one of those moments that he already stepped out on faith. Follow me in this text. And when he had already stepped out on faith, God knew he was ready now for what he had to face. Oh, that's so important. God said, what you're facing shouldn't be causing you so much anguish. What you're going through shouldn't be making you feel so fearful. He said, because with all of the opportunities I gave you to live in faith that you didn't take, you would have been ready by now if you had just had faith over those little things. Because what I was trying to lead you to is my purpose through those faith challenges so you could get your miracle. Joseph was righteous. Let me tell you how, how, how powerful Joseph's righteousness is. Uh, there's three stages to a biblical marriage. Right? There was three stages to the Jewish marriage, and that was when they first got together. If you look at what we call, what we would call marriage, it's different from them because first there was the engagement. It was one of those things that was put together by the parents. So when they were younger, that could have been arranged when they were young kids. Those two will are engaged. Then came the next stage when they were older called the betrothal. But in the betrothal was actually considered, they were considered man and wife. So hear me. When Joseph found Mary with child, they were already married. That was his wife. Because after that, the last stage is the season where the marriage comes, where everything comes together. Joseph was saying, I could publicly lay her out there and embarrass her because I'm angry about the fact that she got pregnant. But because he was righteous, See, there's a difference. See, we, I don't have time, but there's a difference between being righteous and just being saved and want to be in church and just want to be, you know, holy when you're sitting in a crowd. No, righteousness means you make those tough decisions that come against your mind, that come against your pleasure, that come against what you want. And Joseph was standing smack down. You know he was in the middle of something where he did not have to take it and right was on his side, but not righteousness. So Joseph made up his mind he would put her away carefully because Joseph must have had a time where he paid the cost. Let me tell you, in order to be righteous, in order to be able to handle the large faith moments, you must have gone through and paid the cost by giving up the little faith moments. I'll say that again because I see somebody's interested. Y'all, you got to think back in your mind. There was a time I should have stood my ground on faith and I did. What do I mean? If you want to know what it cost to actually live righteous, Esther is a good example. The first thing it's going to cost is you may have to risk everything. You know Esther. Esther was placed as the king, as the queen. And so there was a point where all of God's people were going to be murdered. They were going to be destroyed. So God placed Esther, we got this verse, into the, into the temple, the palace for such a time as this. And so nobody knew about Esther's Jewishness. But then in verse 19, uh, 16, down to 19, it tells the plight that Esther knew that if she went before the king and was not called to go before the king, she should die. But after Mordecai talked to her, listen, let us say these words, but you got to understand the cost. She told him, go make ready. Let the people know that I'm going to see the king. Here's the part you got to understand. If I perish, then I perish. Start right there. Have you ever had that kind of faith? Real faith gets you to the point where someday you got to say, if I perish, let me perish. I still believe in God. 
God. That's how you know when you're willing to risk what people think, risk what people say, risk where you are to do what God say to make sure you're in God's purpose. Not only must you be able to take a risk, you must be able to do like Jacob did. Jacob, 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 Jacob the schemer, Jacob the conniver, Jacob the liar, uh, Jacob the slacker. Come on. How many of y'all know that sounds like some of us? But Jacob had one thing going for him, and that is he loved God. Jacob said, I know I'm no good, but I'm going to hang in here. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm talking to somebody now. I'm blessing somebody out there. Listen, hang in there. I'm glad God put a Jacob in the Bible to let us know that even though we're no good, we will just hang in there. And how many of y'all know sometimes you got to hang in there even when it looks like it hurts? You do remember he was wrestling with a man in Genesis chapter 32. And the man or the angel was really God. And it says that about daybreak, he reached down and pulled the part of Jacob's thigh. And there was pain. There was pain. There was pain. But Jacob wouldn't let go. How many of us run from pain? There was pain. And Jacob wouldn't let go. How many of us say, oh, I hurt now. This is bad. No, God said, that's how I test you to see if you're ready. And Jacob didn't run from the pain. And it says that Jacob, matter of fact, God. understand what Jacob was saying. Jacob was saying, and you want, to, you want to get that scripture where it's at Genesis 32, verse 26. He said, no, I won't let go till you bless me. You got to take a risk like Esther. You got to be able to hold on through pain like Jacob and don't stop till you get. Somebody tell me right now, I'm not stopping till I get what God has for me. And finally, you all look at the, here's the one that kills all of them. And that's Luke chapter 17. Oh my God, verses 17 and 19. It says that Jesus was going about to the temple. He passed 10 lepers hurting. God, I need you. In a leper's condition, he told them to go that way. See the priest, and he healed them. You'll be healed as you go. The Bible says later that Jesus saw the one come back. He said, weren't there 10 of you that got blessed? Where are the other nine? And he said they did not come back to give glory to God. Nobody told the man, you go your way. Your faith has made you whole. That lets you know, if you read into the text, because their heart was not changed, maybe they never got to be whole because of what they did. So Joseph said, uh-uh. I am going to put her away privately. I'm not going to allow her to be embarrassed. And then we find out the second point. Now, let us you know uh, that we found Joseph. Wanted to live righteous. And he was ready to follow God. Don't miss that. Ready to follow God. And we must admit, it's right there in the text. Uh, it says that in the angel of the Lord, verse 20, after he considered this, the angel of the Lord, after he went to sleep, came on him and said, don't, don't worry about marrying Mary. The, the baby she has is a holy child. And uh, when the child comes forth, uh, he's going to save people from his sin, and you want to name him Jesus. So he told him, he said, I need you to get ready right now to accept it. I know you're thinking of putting her away. God said, I know you're there. But you know what it means when you're ready to follow, follow God? I'll change my mind if God said so. If I'm angry and God's word says forgive, I'll forgive. Why? Because I'm trying to walk by faith. All I'm telling you is Joseph was ready to follow God because he had also, somewhere along the line, he made a decision already to live righteous. That means he had some faith challenges. Now I'm a big faith challenge. This was not a little thing. He said, I want you to take this pregnant woman. You don't know who she's been with. You got to trust God that it was a holy, immaculate conception, and I want you to marry her. Joseph did not have to do it, but he did. Because he was ready to follow God. Don't mess this up. Sometimes we go back and forth. Some of you will never see a miracle. And right now you need one. Some of you will never see the, the kind of miracles that God already has placed in your life. Because the miracles are in the purpose God has. And you'll never take that faith step to get in God's purpose like Joseph did. Because the great miracle that was coming was he was going to be a part of bringing the Messiah on the scene. And yet he was ready. How many times have you missed your miracle because you would not break out and make that challenge? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. 
I read in 2020, it was always astounding to me how some of these you know, uh, celebrities with all of these multi-million dollars they made, how they found themselves going to jail because of tax problems. And the latest one, I read that Chris Tucker was sued, here's something, this is something that's scary, he was sued by the IRS for $9.6 million. He was sued by the IRS and, and they were getting ready to tax his, uh, his, uh, get his, um, uh, all his property and attack any of his assets. They were about to own all of them and the next step would be jail. Well, they gave an explanation why Chris Tucker did that. Because Chris Tucker found himself at a point that he owed taxes for years that went by. Four million in 2002, five million this year, three million for this year. And, he, and when he was making a little bit of money, he just ignored his taxes. And then when he was making a lot of money, twenty dollars, twenty million dollars a movie, he was supposed to pay his taxes, but they had built up so much that he didn't have any money to pay it. He had bought houses and cars and kept up with everybody else. You hear what I said? Keeping up with everybody else, not walking out on faith, not doing what you're supposed to do. That's what Chris Tucker did. Now it came time for him to pay that nine point six million. And he does not have it, so the next step is going to be jail. Listen, all I'm saying is don't look at, at Chris and say, well, I know he had all those $20 million. You know, I know he made all those movies. He made three movies with Jackie Chan. They grossed over $100 million. How in the world did he get broke? The same way I'm telling you that you're sitting there now in a broken condition and a broken situation because there was a time in 2002 when you should have stepped out on faith, but you stood back. There was a time when you should have been building your faith, but you did not. And now you sit here needing a real miracle, a real deliverance, and you got to have a big faith, a leap of faith, and you now don't have enough in you because you haven't been walking by faith and you haven't lined yourself up with God's purpose. Joseph said, I'm ready to follow God because I know in his purpose is where I want to be, and that's where the blessing is going to be. Look what Joseph did. The Bible says Joseph had a point where the angel said to him, your going to name him Jesus. I like what God does. He invites us to be part of his power. He invites us to walk in that overcoming ability. Yet, right now, I'm inviting you right now to listen to what I'm saying. You know the verse in Acts 1 and 8 where it says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you. You know what that power is? He said, you shall be my witnesses. Power is when I line up with God. My brother and sister, please, this morning, I don't care what you have to do. God is telling you, line your life with my purpose. Step out on faith. It's going to hurt. It's going to be something that challenges you. But you have to do it. Moses knew, I'm a fugitive. Uh, I'm out here in the desert. I'm a lonely shepherd. But I'm going to step to God. And God made Moses the deliverer. I can name you over and over again. David, nobody wanted to kill the giant. David said, let me kill this giant. I've already been out there killing the sheep, killing the bear. I've already made some faith. Now this is nothing, which takes me to the last point. The Bible says, Joseph also not only wanted to live righteous, Joseph also was ready to follow God. Here's what I don't want you to miss. The weight of his relationship with God Weight more than his relationship with people. You got to get to the point that your miracle is not contingent upon what others think. It's not contingent. You have to hear it for yourself. I know some people let other people lead them astray. You know, uh, I know folk, and I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about this dispensation that have left churches because other folk told them to leave. God ain't telling them to go nowhere. I remember one time somebody offered me, uh, and I told you about that, said, you know, this church is over, we really want you. I was almost lured by the luxury of that, but then I realized I'm in God's will. So you need to know when God, you know when, how you know when you're in God's will? Because if you leave for some comfort, if you leave for something that makes you feel good, if you don't, if you don't practice faith because of something you say, I think I'm supposed to have this, then you lost it because most of our journey is lived in pain. 
but the pain is, uh, is nothing compared to the power that comes. That's why we can say stuff like, I'm on the wall, I'm about a good work, and I will not come. Do you hear what happens? You got to learn how to stand. Look what Joseph did. And it says, when he awoke from his sleep. I like verse 22. It said, all this was done. Why? For God's purpose. So, so the writing could be fulfilled that Isaiah said. Everything that happens in your life is God's purpose. You're saying, Pastor, how do I get that miracle? How do I get my healing? How do I get my deliverance? How do I save my house? How do I save my children? You got to learn that I have to step into God's purpose and every miracle, every desire I have, when I line up with God, will come to pass. Joseph, can you see him? Hugging a pregnant Mary. I don't know how they hid that in public. I, you know, they were married. Maybe folk thought that Joseph slept with Mary, but I know he went, you know, walking in the park with her. He was not ashamed because he was trusting God. Because the Bible said when he woke up, he did what the Lord said. He took Mary home and made her his wife. Here's the part that he didn't let you, but he did not consummate or sleep with her so he could be in the will of God. You get to the point that you just don't care. My relationship with God is more important to me. Uh, I'm not going to let anything else drag me out of my relationship with God. God has a purpose and a plan. I'm going to quit trying to alter God's plan, and I'm going to do what God says do with my life. When it's time to stand, the children of Israel ran. What did do? Ran back to a golden calf. Want to get back to Egypt. When it was time to stand... Children of Israel found themselves looking at the sons of, and they thought, well, look, uh, uh, there's giants in the land. All I want to tell you is, you got to stand in an uncomfortable place until it gets comfortable and watch the blessing of God come. And God told me to tell you, prophetically by His Spirit, I got your miracle. Every desire you need. I have what you want this morning. It's yours. It's in your reach. All you have to do is make up your mind. I am going to live by faith. And when that faith challenge moment comes, it's going to be just what Joseph did. I'm going to live righteous. I'm going to want to be ready. When God calls, I want to be ready to follow God. And I'm going to let my relationship with God be so important till I never walk in defeat Again, my brothers and sisters, this Christmas story holds a whole lot of principles that can get you out of the condition you're in right now. The miracles for your life are in your purpose. But you got to step out on faith and you got to get in his purpose so God will have a free range to bless you, to help build his kingdom. This Pastor Duncan, take this message, share it with someone. During Christmas season, there's going to be some hard challenges coming your way. But I dare you to step out on faith. God bless. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down, but with the no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody. Breathing but not living, just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free 